Hi, I'm Dana and my lighting is a little bit off because I'm filming while it's getting dark but I've tried my best and I hope things look okay and honestly what I'm saying is the most important part of my videos anyway so if they look a bit mm, we'll live. <laughs> In today's video I want to carry on my little series learning to be autistic which is all about the sort of the process of figuring out who I was or I'm an autistic person. There's a bit of a, like a crossover now because I'm remaking the sort of earlier videos because I just feel like I have much better understanding and I can explain things better and I have more language for things. So I'm remaking a whole bunch of stuff. So it's sort of a mixture of like where I was and where I am. It's a whole thing to figure out who you are as an autistic person after a late diagnosis and that's what these videos are about. So while I've been remaking this series I've been trying to go much more chronologically than I did originally because a lot of it originally was me just being like I figured this thing out and that's sort of what my whole channel has become now so to go in a more chronological order we started out with like sort of figuring out that you're autistic and feelings around going for a diagnosis and getting the actual diagnosis and the last video which I'll link here was all about processing that you've gotten the diagnosis and you are an autistic person so the follow-on from that for me was starting to accommodate to myself and starting to try to actually care for myself as an autistic person and one of the big things that came along with that was my close family and my partner at the time saying it's weird how you've gotten this diagnosis and all of a sudden you're more autistic now and I feel like that's the type of thing that a lot of us face as we sort of accept ourselves and unmask and people see who we actually are there is a lot of the thought that we're becoming more autistic and we're just acting more autistic because we've got the diagnosis and we're just playing up into it but I'd, at least for me that absolutely was not the case at all it was fully just that I was starting to figure out who I was and starting to sort of just try to exist as a person you know like I'd gone for diagnosis because I hadn't been able to do anything I barely left the house I barely got out of bed like I didn't live I didn't really exist as a person so I was trying to rebuild myself and build myself knowing who I could be and who I was and what I can do and that's very much my first point here I d I'm not really good at like making points in videos it is sort of a long conversational sort of ramble but I make notes like I do put effort into these you know so my first big thing is that I think people see us as becoming more autistic and acting more autistic and whatever else because for me knowing that I was autistic was very much sort of like a gate opening to be able to explore what it means to be autistic and the things that I was struggling with that I didn't understand why everything was such a struggle for me you know I was constantly looking around at everyone else and being like well they can do it so why can't I and I suddenly had this answer of like oh well I'm autistic and I'm just trying to not be essentially I'm trying to just go about the world like I'm a normal ordinary person that is not autistic right? When I am autistic and I really struggled to sort of process and accept that I was autistic it took me like nearly two years to tell anyone outside of my family my partner and the guy that I was working for at the time because I was just like having a meltdown in work so like I really struggled to like just accept that I was an autistic person so it was quite far into like my diagnosis journey or whatever that I started to actually have any degree of self-acceptance towards myself as an autistic person and it was really invalidating and disheartening to show the people closest to me more of who I was and have them be like why are you acting like this why are you pretending like this why are you doing this and sitting there and be like this is who I've always been I've just been too scared to like be myself and not knowing how to be myself and not understood who I am and for me a lot of that self-acceptance meant that I started to set boundaries and I had never set boundaries in my entire life I'm an absolute people pleaser I just kind of want to do what I'm told I would like to just be told what to do all the time and I will do it but as I was like processing that I'm autistic and that these things are difficult for me because I'm autistic you know doing the same thing over and over and over thinking that I would suddenly stop finding it to be a struggle stop finding it to be so overwhelming I now knew was not going to work like I really thought that was how to get over my anxiety that was what therapists and everyone told me you know just keep doing the thing just keep doing the thing and I would keep doing the thing and it was the same level of difficulty every time and it burnt me out and made me feel terrible each and every time so I started saying no to things and setting boundaries around things and when people would be like but you've always done it before why is it different now the only way that I could think to explain it is like I know I'm autistic now I didn't know that I was autistic before I knew this thing was a struggle I knew that I found it really difficult but I didn't know why and I knew that everyone else was okay with it so I tried to just be okay with it 
and in explaining that all anyone ever seemed to hear was well I'm autistic now so I can't do that you know it felt like everything I was saying was just like going in and coming out was well I'm autistic now when the truth was that I'd always been autistic and it had always been really really hard I was just I'm not willing to put myself through those types of unnecessary struggles anymore but setting those boundaries really just made people mad and got people really annoyed that I wasn't doing everything for them and being the ultimate people pleaser and just completing any task that they set for me you know and along that same path, I also started to understand that I was missing lots of social cues. A lot of the times when I would agree to things, I didn't really understand what I was agreeing to. And some degree of that was that people did that to me on purpose. If if I knew that something was going to be really hard and horrible and a horrible experience to go through, obviously, I would have been more likely to say no. So they would twist things and squirm things and, you know, do neurotypical things to stuff to make it sound like it wouldn't be the way that it would be. And honestly, I'd have probably just agreed to do it anyway, because like I say, I was the ultimate people pleaser. But in understanding that I was missing social cues and thinking that the people, I thought the people around me were good people still. So I was like, oh, obviously I'm misunderstanding them communicating clearly because I'm autistic. So how do I solve that? How do I accommodate to that issue? I'll start asking for clarification. I'll start asking, what do you mean by that? What will that entail? You know, all those types of questions, actually getting the clarity of the situation to know what I'm agreeing to. And I saw that as a smart way to accommodate to myself and everyone else saw that as me acting more autistic, suddenly asking all these questions, all of a sudden not understanding things that I'd always understood when I'd never actually understood any of it. I'd just made a lot of assumptions and watched what other people were doing and sort of tried to take the cues and do what I was meant to be, you know? And I often wouldn't do those things well and people would get really annoyed at me for struggling with them or not understanding what I was supposed to do. And yet when I asked the questions that would mean I would know what to do and wouldn't struggle with it so much, people got really mad about it and thought that I was acting more autistic and that I'd always been able to do these things so well. And why all of a sudden now that you've got a diagnosis, can you not? A major part of the unmasking sort of journey for me was also figuring out how to stim and the ways that I like to stim because I had been a chronic leg bouncer from the age of like 12 so my family were really used to my leg constantly bouncing my foot going if I was sat somewhere and that was fine because that's a tell of anxiety as soon as I started like I got my tangle quite quite quickly into like the whole thing and I love the tangle fidget toys they're my favorite things in the whole entire world and that was such a different vibe to them. They would get so angry and so annoyed that I was using a fidget toy and acting like a child and acting more autistic. And why do you suddenly need that thing? And it's like, I have spent half of my life jiggling my leg because I'm so like anxious and so need something to do and don't know what to do with my body and don't understand why I have this like weird inside energy that needs to come out in some way. And now that I've found the thing that I can do that isn't just bouncing my leg and still feeling awful, you're annoyed and I'm acting up and I'm playing this and I'm acting more autistic and it especially baffles me honestly because you're being mean to me for acting more autistic or being more autistic like people don't like the autistic traits that I'm showing you are actively annoyed that I'm showing them why would I act that up why would I just pretend like I'm having an actively negative effect from the way that I'm behaving. Surely if it wasn't benefiting me, if it wasn't natural, if it wasn't the way that I am, I would see that I'm getting a negative reaction and stop doing it. Like I'm not going to just pretend and go out of my way to fake something that is actively not gaining me anything. I don't understand why anyone would do that and I'm sure as hell not. And I do think that the way that people reacted to me and especially the fact that it was the people that were closest to me and are supposed to be the most like understanding and accepting towards you, you know? The fact that they responded so negatively and so obviously didn't particularly like who I am as an autistic person and not the masked, horribly depressed, anxious, anxious, just not doing well version of myself. I don't know what happened to my words there, I'm sorry, I don't want to try and re-say the sentence. And like, it's especially sort of frustrating because I feel like I'm so much of a better person to be around and a better person in general now that I know that I'm autistic, you know? Like being so much less stressed and so much more accepting and understanding of myself has also definitely led to more accept set more acceptance and understanding of other people as well. Like I just feel like a lot of my autistic traits are the things that make me a kind of nice person. Like I don't want to sit on the internet and be like, I'm a nice person. But you know, like I had a lot of anger and a lot of discomfort and just very very negative feelings before I knew I was autistic because I knew there was something wrong with me and obviously being autistic isn't having something wrong with you but I spent up until I was 22 years old and finally diagnosed wondering what the fuck was wrong with me 
And actually, I can imagine feeling like that all the time and feeling like everything you do and every social interaction you have and just every person that you meet can tell that there's something wrong with you and there's something off and you're not like, you're just not like everybody else. Like, it just bred a whole host of negative feelings that I feel like probably did make me quite a sort of like resentful, angry, like not very nice, like not as nice as I could have been person. Like, I don't remember a whole bunch of my life but the things that I do remember I don't think I've ever been like an actively nasty person an actively mean person but there's definitely been a lot of times that I haven't been actively nice as well you know and there's still lots of times that I'm not actively nice but I don't think I'm you know actively nasty as well it's fine to be neutral but I do think that because I have less negative feelings in general about myself about my life about whatever else I probably am nicer to people and I do think I'm a nicer person and that's not to say I'm a nice person but I do think that I'm nicer than I was before I knew I was autistic you know and that's something that you would not have gotten out of me like a couple of years ago when I was still trying to like process that I'm autistic and still trying to just work on the really negative messages I'd been given about myself the messages that I'd given to myself all of that kind of stuff you know like there was a whole lot of other stuff that I was working through as well besides just being autistic but finding out that I'm autistic was the kind of key that I needed to be able to start unlocking the other stuff and dealing with it and working through stuff and all of all of that sort of area of things you know and I feel like it gave me the like actual ability to be able to start settling into myself and actually discovering who I am because if, if you've watched my content a while you already know I'm sorry to say it all the time but for anyone new I was in a really horrible abusive relationship for eight years so even if I wasn't autistic I feel like I would have really needed to do a lot of rediscovering of myself after that because he really tried to shape me into what he wanted me to be and really succeeded for the most part because I wanted to be what he wanted me to be. And honestly, I largely think that that relationship ended when it did, which was in 2022, because of my diagnosis in 2019 and me starting to like settle into myself and discover who I am and actually have a sense of self and have some degree of an identity and understanding that like I am a person with my own thoughts and choices and decisions and I don't have to go through things that are really hard or horrible for me and so on and so forth. So although in a lot of ways, like unmasking and realising that I can be myself and that I have a self to be and all that, you know, in a lot of ways, it caused a lot of big changes in my life that were really not fun to go through. But being on the other side of them is a hell of a lot more fun than it was on that side, you know? Like it, it needed to happen and it was fucking hard, but I made it happen because I had more understanding of myself and I could look after myself more and accommodate to myself more. So it was overall a massive positive. That, that last part was especially rambly, but I feel like the start of this video had some good points and some good discussion things going on. And I mentioned that because this is the end of the video. And as always, I would love it if you commented. I like these videos to be discussion starters and not, not exclusively just me sharing my opinions, you know? Like my, and as always, this is purely my thoughts and opinions. I'm not sure I said that at the start because I don't feel like it should have to be said in every single video, but I kind of feel like it does. I really love this being sort of like a community space where people can share their opinions and share their thoughts and everything's just like safe and nice and we can all respect each other. So please do respect each other. If you want to see more of me, you can follow me here. You can subscribe and like this video because I post videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. I'm doing it guys, it's going ahead. I've carried on doing it well past, I think it was just January I said I was gonna do, maybe just February. It's the new schedule now, it's a permanent thing I think, I'm enjoying it. So there's that. You can also follow me over on TikTok for currently daily, up. Oh, it's not updates, just daily little videos of me chatting shit or like doing a little lip sync thing. I don't dance. <laughs> if I could, I probably would, I won't lie, but I can't. So we don't do that, but I do. I do autism content over there too if you're on TikTok and would like to follow me. I'm close to hitting 5,000 followers there and that's quite exciting. Like I don't care too much about numbers but also when it's about to become like a big one that's round and whole, that is enjoyable. I do get excited, you know, but you don't have to and that's not the bit I say that you don't have to to. This, this next bit is because I also have a Ko-fi and a Patreon where you can donate to me financially if you have money. Uh, like if you have enough money please don't like if you're in debt don't send it to me don't bankrupt yourself over me I will be fine but if you oh god I need have I been doing it for the whole video 
I need to find quieter fidget toys, okay? If I've been doing that for the whole video, I'm really sorry. But yeah, you don't have to send me money. It's completely fine if you don't. I like that this content is free and accessible to like basically anyone, I think. I don't know. I like that it's free at least. So yeah, that that's that. That is the end of the video. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you'll be having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year, and I will see you again in a couple of days.